Regarding the ecosystem, the technological eco ecosystem RFP, um, does your RFP account for the ability to upgrade and stay modern with that equipment as it goes? A concern that I would have is if you're looking at assembling some sort of a proprietary technology system that is kind of a, a, a reinvented wheel, so to speak, um, does your RFP account for how easy it will be in future years to upgrade and maintain that equipment so that it stays current and, and is able to continue operational for, for some period of time? Representative, we, we place the, uh, the lifespan of that equipment at approximately eight to 10 years. Uh, so we look to the future with that regard when we, when we bid these uh, projects out. Uh, one of the other things that we want to look to also is the scalability of the, of the uh, uh, if we can't do it all in one fiscal year, that we want to look to maybe overlap it. Uh, it, w uh, the service network is a huge aspect of this as well. Uh, we, we put uh, mobile office computers and MVRs into 1,600 patrol vehicles across the Commonwealth. So it's a significant investment, but above and beyond that, it's a, a, a significant uh, infrastructure, if you will, to maintain as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, to, to, address your, to, to answer your question, uh, yes, we do take those types of things into consideration when we look to the... To the Excellent. I, I appreciate that, sir. And then um, uh, would any proposal that you entertain under that system be fully compatible with the P25 Starnet system as well? Would they work together, or is that a separate sort of system? There's actually a requirement that it, it, it cannot interfere with the P25 system. Cannot interfere, uh, okay. Exactly. Uh, the, 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 the compatibility issue, would, would, it, there would not be one there as far as it uh, integrating into it, you know, the communicate with uh, the radio would be separate, if you will, from the, from the, uh, the data transmission. Oh. Okay, thank you very much. Shifting gears real quick, I wanted to go, and we've had some conversation about PICS, and uh, I'm a military guy, but sometimes I know acronyms get th thrown here or there. So Pennsylvania Instant Check System, the uh, background check that we use for uh, firearms transactions. Um, in your testimony, as was noted by one of the prior uh, members, um, you, you note your system downtime was limited to less than 1%. Can you give us a little background on how you, per, uh, uh, how you calculate that percentage? Yes, sir, sure. So um, by legislative mandate, PICS has to be available 8 in the morning till 10 at night, uh, 365 days a year. Uh, in fact, we open earlier. If we know there's going to be a large gun sale or Black Friday, we actually uh, open earlier so that the gun dealers can get into the system if they have a 5 o'clock in the morning sale, for example. Um, but what we calculate actually is the total downtime, and, and we uh, categorize the downtime, if you will, by the nature of the downtime. So. NICS, the National Instant Check System, PICS hits NICS. That's one of the 14 database, or not actual databases, but that's one of the uh, conduits that we use to, to uh, glean information. So if NICS is down, PICS is down. And, and we document that as a NICS outage because we don't have control over that. Uh, so for 2018, PICS was down a total of about 49 hours. 11 of those were federal related. Now those numbers are both down from the previous year when the NICS system um, had some transition issues and they were down a significant amount of time. But of those 49, 11 were, were federally related. Uh, state related were actually 16 hours. And if you look at when we say state related, PICS utilizes as a message switch our Commonwealth Law Enforcement Assistance Network, so the CLEAN Network. Um, think about the CLEAN Network. That's what officers across the state rely on for their information. So this isn't just PICS reaching into a system. This is the network that law enforcement relies on to determine wanted persons, to run, uh, 1020, to run driver's licenses. That's a critical system. And we need that back up as soon as possible. And every effort's made to keep clean from going down. But if clean goes down, PICS goes down. So of those, those uh, state-related hours, very often those 16 hours of downtime, um, clean network uh, outages and things of that nature, uh, or one of the databases was down, and we simply can't hit the database. And then miscellaneous, which could include uh, widespread power outages, Verizon uh, outages where we've had issues with phone lines, something as simple as a fire drill. Uh, but that was a total of 22 hours. So we had about 49 hours total downtime in, in 2018. Thank you. And is that Monday through Friday, seven days a week? I think you said seven, seven days, days a week. Seven days a week, 365 a year, including Christmas. And yes, we do some transactions on Christmas. Th thank you very much. And uh, regarding, um, regarding that, that time, uh, do you ever have scheduled outages for maintenance? Uh, 
when we have scheduled outages for maintenance, because PIX closes at, at 10 at night, we actually do them overnight. So we'll normally put in changes, application changes, development changes, and all the other systems that PIX relies upon. Our technology folks are aware of the criticality of the PIX application. So there's a concerted effort to put changes in overnight when it won't impact PIX. I really appreciate your, your information here, and, and it does sound like your trend line is going the right direction. In, in previous years, I have had uh, complaints from constituents with the inability to proceed with transactions at certain times. I've become well acquainted with your ledge affairs team, but it sounds like your trend line is going the right way. I encourage you to keep it up.